Hello and welcome back to the grow room. That's right, it is night and my smart plugs are working great so we have our moonlight going. But I'm gonna turn the light on so that you guys can see what we are doing. So here it is, just yesterday, these looked like seeds and pretty much nothing else, like little sprouts were kind of coming out of them, but there was no green, and now look, look at the chlorophyll that is going on. Look at the photosynthesis that is going on that is creating the chlorophyll. Look at the green, beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Our uh, little gelatinous, basil plants are all sprouting now you can see that you can see all the little white tips coming out of those these are sunflowers they're looking good they're looking good I can say the water has evaporated a bit you can see the mark on the tray if I can, there you go and it's also been soaked up like crazy by the seeds and here's our radishes Look at the color on those gorgeous daikon radish seeds. So yeah, very happy to uh, to report that this is going absolutely as planned. It is gorgeous. We see absolutely no mold whatsoever. Um, uh, absolutely clean environment and just just wonderful in here now the humidity i gotta say is a little low it looks like we're gonna have to get a humidifier and the temperature is right about where we want it uh, we have the thermostat set to 75 it is currently 72 degrees in here um, so this is doing pretty well at regulating right around the temperature that we want what i'm gonna do now is i'm just gonna turn the heat up just a couple degrees to try and maintain that 75 so I'll just go ahead and let that reset and then we'll go ahead and turn the daytime lights off so these plants can have a rest and we just have our nice moonlighting going on in here so we're trying to replicate similar lighting conditions to daylight and nighttime hours and plants can plants can do pretty well under 16 hours of light but beyond that you're kind of stressing them you're kind of causing them to grow faster than they should um, and that can that can lead to issues such as uh, uh, improper uh, growth, they can look weird, they can taste uh, taste wrong. That, now they're not, they don't go bad, but they just don't taste as good. So yeah, very excited though, everything's going great and just wanted to give you guys an update. Thanks for tuning in. All right, welcome back to the grow room. <clears throat> I, uh, I showed you guys last night and now I'm going to show you the next day so you can get an idea of the amount of change that we have. All right, let's take a look at this, huh? Well, I can tell you the major difference is these seeds right here. These are the basil seeds and look at those tap roots or you know what, I'm sorry, I'm not sure if they're called tap roots, but the beginning roots, look at those go. I would say the sesame, or excuse me, the um, sunflower seeds are about twice as sprouted as yesterday. And the water level is pretty much gone. Um, they are just eating this up, eating, well, eating, they're drinking it up. They're drinking this water up. These are radishes, okay? And these are, I wanna say arugula. Look at the little baby cotyledons. All right, if you know 
what kind, uh, okay, if you know if these are monocots or dicots, not because you just know, but based upon what you can see, then go ahead and comment down below. Monocot or dicot? Arugula. Monocot or dicot? Oh, let me get, there you go. Monocot or dicot? Radish. This is daikon radish. I don't know if we can tell yet with these. Or with sunflowers. Mm. Oh, here we go. Okay, so here's something really interesting. Oh, I think it's really interesting. You can tell that there's a little bit of white mold growing here which is perfectly normal. It happens on like every batch of sunflowers. Now, rather than throwing the batch out, we can do something, which is we have the 10% solution of hydrogen peroxide, 90% pure water. And we're just gonna give this a light spritz. And you will see, and I'll do it to all of them just in case. Now, I'm trying not to hit the other plants because I don't want to destroy any root hairs. The root hairs are very sensitive. They don't like the hydrogen peroxide. trick and you can see a lot of that mold just instantly disappear and it will go away and it will ensure that we have a nice healthy crop and that is the standard <coughs> for um, control of uh, mold and other uh, uh, what do I want to say uh, unhealthy activity in your sprouting. So that's what they do in the business. It's not it's not like oh I'm just coming up with this. It's what you do to safely produce uh, the microgreens. <clears throat> so anyway, now that the water's really low, I'm gonna test this. Okay, so we've got, you know, uh, a quarter inch, maybe a third of an inch there. I'm gonna go ahead and add some water. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna spray the tops of the plants. I have it on shower. We're gonna switch over to mist. Okay, mist. It'll focus, there you go. And we're just gonna go ahead and mist these plants here. A nice light mist. There we go. And we'll add some water to the pan over here. Now realize that's not soil, that's just the color coming out of the coconut matting. So there we go. That is enough water to get them through the next day. Now each day they're going to drink a little bit more because they're going to be a little bit bigger and they're going to be a little bit thirstier. Just like when we get older, we'll drink a whole glass of water, but when we're children we might drink a half a glass of water. And look at this. I don't know if you can tell, uh, some of these are all of a sudden much taller. That is so cool. See that one in the back? It just shot up when it got sprayed with the fresh water. And what, it, what they're doing is they're standing up straight so that the water catches on, on the leaves and then drip, drips straight down to the roots of the plant. Are taller too now. So look at that one right in the middle. The that guy right there. Like, oh yes, water. <laughs> Fresh water. I think this is a little taller. Just kind of started straightening out, filling up with the fresh water. You like that. Anyway, that's it. <laughs> kind of exciting to see the plants like move almost in real time. Oh, okay. <laughs> just like flicked itself. Okay, sorry. It's just exciting seeing them move like that. Um, you know, it's it's not it's not often that you get to see um, you get to see plants reacting to things. Usually they're just static or they seem static because they move so slow. Um, 
to the human eye. I'm really excited for this basil. And we even have some some red coloration here, which will look really pretty when they start growing a little bit more. Very exciting. Very excited to show this to you guys, and uh, very excited to to share this product and to share this knowledge. So I hope you guys who uh, who are watching, I hope I hope if you're watching this that you're gonna go out and you're gonna um, grow some microgreens yourself because it's so easy you can't just put them in the windowsill um, if you want our grow system our next grow system instead of putting up insulation and putting up plastic and and wood and all this other stuff to make these structures we're growing uh, we're gonna be growing out of Nomex uh, foil line Nomex tents that are designed specifically to do exactly what we did with our structure here <clears throat> So, yeah, you know, very excited because now we're going to be able to provide those Nomex tents along with all the proper um, uh, uh, devices such as the humidifier, dehumidifier, uh, that's not humidifier, the humidifier and a dehumidifier, uh, lighting, the pans, the substrate, um, the, uh, the risers, uh, although they won't be metal like this, they'll be bamboo, which is better. Um, you know, we have to have circulation um, and heating and, <clears throat> and and water, and so we're going to provide all of that in our kits. And we're really just really excited to start providing this because uh, it just means a healthier lifestyle and uh, and food in places where it's otherwise considered like a food desert. So you can take my phone just had an error. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Um, like I was saying though, you see in these impoverished areas, um, people don't make as much money. So they start to get desperate because they need more money. So they turn to crime or their lives are not fulfilling as fulfilling as they want them to be. So they turn to drugs and oftentimes crime comes with drugs. And so we see crime rates higher in an impoverished portion of a city. And so what happens is the companies don't want to go into that impoverished part of the city and build there and companies will move out of the area. Um, even mom and pop stores that are run by the people who live in that area will leave. Uh, or even the people who live in that area who may be bringing some wealth to the area, um, who run these businesses will leave that area. They'll go live somewhere else where it's safer. Um, and so, and so it becomes a cycle of less money and more and more crime and which causes less money which causes more crime etc 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 and uh, and people can't get out of that system and so well, not system excuse me they can't get out of that uh, that those circumstances and so um and of course there's a variety of other uh, uh circumstantial evidence that to that, that that interacts with this but this is just uh, part of the example of what's going on in the impoverished areas of our cities so what happens is because the stores won't open up there or they leave. They don't have grocery stores, so they have to travel further to get groceries. But they can't travel further because they can't even afford a car, let alone be able to walk that far. And and, um, and then they work themselves into into um, into disabilities, and then they're dependent on the state, and it just it can become a big bad cycle. So something that we want to do is break that food desert. We want to we want to bring food into those areas. We want to. Um, start to help people um, have funds by saying we're gonna teach you how to grow microgreens and you're gonna sell to the local restaurants and because you're gonna be a spot of wealth you're gonna help your community and um, and because you pay more taxes what's gonna happen is the city's gonna recognize the area as a place that pays more taxes and so they're gonna fix the streets they're gonna fix the the uh, they're gonna fix all the um, infrastructure in the area and and we're gonna start bringing wealth back into these areas in the right way um, and and showing trust and love and care for people who may not have have that otherwise and are dependent on other other uh, things such as you know like substance abuse and and uh, and crime and, and stealing and um, and the processing uh, the, the making building processing and selling of um, illegal substances and 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 just all kinds of, of uh, things that society deems wrong and that well that is wrong and you know we just we want to start making an impact so um, you know, the impoverished areas of our cities are just a great place to do that because our our system that we have here for growing microgreens is 
so repeatable. It's so easy to quickly get invested or for us to uh, spend very little money to invest in other people, to invest in our community, in our cities, um, and bring business back to sectors where there wasn't business and bring business back to the U.S., you know, um, to create what we need. Um, the U.S., I was just talking to my wife earlier, the U.S. wastes so much food. I mean, we eat so much more food than other countries, but the biggest issue is that we waste so much food. We just throw things out because they go bad, um, because we buy too much because our eyes are bigger than our stomachs. and. Um, and there's, you know, a kind of a heart and a soul condition there and, and, uh, and we think we need, 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 and so we buy more than we need. And not only do we waste other items, but we waste all this food. So when we waste this food, what happens is I have like one minute to talk. So we waste this food and, um, and, it, and that's food that could be going to people who need that food. So what we want to do is create, uh, an, oh. And, and all this food that we're wasting, we waste so much food plus, plus we eat so much food that we literally could not produce the amount of food that we need here in the United States. It's all going toward corn and soy, basically. Um, and so we're trying to change that by fixing the food deserts, bringing fresh, healthy food to local areas, and bringing business back. Thanks very much. Subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down. Tell me why if you thumbs down. And, uh, and do me a favor and uh, subscribe if you like these videos. Thank you.